Jared here with Onyx, and I want to show you what we would consider the full whitetail solution while using WebMap scouting for a whitetail hunt from home. That's really where the power of the Onyx Hunt app lies, is using all of our layers and features in combination to make you more successful in the field. So jumping in, this is just an example property in Missouri. As you can see, I have Missouri private and government lands turned on. Those are pretty much the most crucial layers to make sure that you know exactly where you are, whether you're hunting a familiar piece of private, making sure you know those borders, an entirely new piece of public, the Onyx Hunt app is gonna have you covered um, with those land boundaries to make sure you're on the right side of the fence. The next thing that I am always going to have on when scouting uh, for whitetails is crop data layers. Given that we're in Missouri, you know, a lot of the main crops there is going to be corn and soybeans and understanding the crop rotation between corn and soybeans. Typically, if it's planted in corn in 2020, that's going to be in beans in 2021 and vice versa. If it was in beans in 2020, that's going to be corn in 2021. Then the next layer that I would make sure that you go check out, this is a brand new one from Onyx, is under the tree species and habitat maps. So if you click on that, right now there's deciduous tree distribution, coniferous tree distribution, and wetlands. We're also going to be adding a couple more layers to this, but for now, I'm gonna flip on this deciduous tree distribution layer, and under layer settings, you can get very granular as to what type of deciduous tree that you are interested in finding. So if you just simply click on these to deselect them, the only one I'm going to leave on is the oak hickory layer, because um, that's gonna be, give me a great idea of where mature stands of oaks are um, to hopefully find that mast crop on the ground that deer will be keying in on uh, throughout much of October. The next thing, um, as far as map tools go, is waypoints. As you can see, I have waypoints scattered across this property. Um, and so tree stands are something I always mark 100% of the time. You can share them with your buddies, your family, you know, whoever it may be, simply share that waypoint. It's gonna drop that tree stand on that exact location. Then they can navigate there without a problem. You don't have to handhold them to get to their stand. Um, just works out really well. I also mark bedding areas. These are just key areas that I typically want to stay out of, but I want to be hunting in close proximity to, and for sure, in many cases, want to be between food and bed. And then lastly, the other two uh, whitetail signs I mark almost 100% of the time are rubs and scrapes. These just give you a great idea of where a buck's core area is and you know where they're most consistently using uh, travel patterns or using the terrain features to funnel movement. You'll find rubs and scrapes in these areas. Marking them on your Onyx Hunt app is going to allow you to build the bigger picture. Um, when you look at your map from a bird's eye view, you're gonna start to understand travel patterns um, and just areas of high concentration of, of buck sign and that'll typically point you in the right direction of, of getting started in a great spot to kill buck. So now jumping into combining all of those features to make yourself more successful in the field. As you can see, uh, with multiple layers turned on here, as you scroll your cursor over, it's going to tell you um, what some of these layers are. So as you can see this here on this chunk of Missouri public, is a 20 acre, just about 20 acre soybean field. In 2020, it was soybeans. So I'm going to anticipate that to be planted in corn just based on crop rotations. And the exact vice versa on this corn field here, which pretty small, 12 acres, honestly, just like a, a little corn food plot. Um, so those are areas of high interest to me. So after I determine, you know, those, those two crop fields that are going to be key food sources. Um, what I'm gonna be looking for is bedding area in close proximity to those, because that's probably going to be harboring does in November based on those key food sources. And where you're gonna find does, you're gonna find bucks. So what I'm going to then do looking at these two crop field areas is I'm quickly going to switch to our 3D map here and just see what the terrain lays out as. And 
as you can see, it's pretty dang flat. So I'm going to flip the topo map on and try to just get a visual of any distinct ridges that might be around. And as you can see here, just north of these crop of the cornfield and a little bit east of this soybean field, you see this ridge kind of falling off this top. And that is an immediate area of interest of a potential doe bedding area, um, just based on the topography combined with a food source nearby. So that's for sure an area that I would drop a bedding waypoint and make a point to go check out um, in the early stages of my hunt. And then if you flip back to 2D and then satellite, you can analyze that bedding area. You know, I know that that's a nice ridge falling off the top. And as you can see here, it's pretty heavily timbered. And on top of that, our habitat map and tree species layer is showing me that that chunk of timber is predominantly oak hickories, which with a mature stand of timber like that, I can zoom in here and it definitely doesn't look super open. So I'm banking that there's probably great food inside of the timber right on the edges of these agricultural fields. I'm gonna guess this is gonna be a dynamite bedding spot. Um, that would be a great spot to start your hunt at uh, if you didn't have any other information coming into this area. Now, as you can see, I have a plethora of other icons on the map here um, that I just placed. Um, I've never been to this spot but just based on topography and how some of the vegetation laid out, um, I set some tree stand examples here with what I would guess to be their optimal wind not having hunted the area. And I wanna quickly show you how you can set the optimal wind on any one of these waypoints so you can be better prepared for your next hunt and quickly at a glance know if you have the right wind to hunt that particular location or not. So if you go in and click on any icon, I'll click on this tree stand here, you have this wind direction card that pulls up. So from there, you can select what the optimal wind would be. Um, looking at this one, you know, it's right on this finger of cover with just a big open pasture to itself. So I would say north, northeast, and a northwest wind blowing off of this top here. Um, would be good winds to hunt. And as you can see today in that location, there's an east wind and it pops up as an okay wind. If you have a good wind for that stand, it's gonna come up in green, bad is gonna be red, and then iffy will come up as orange. So just a super easy way to help you quickly determine if that stand is gonna be huntable or not based on today's weather conditions. Another tool that I really put to use uh, particularly around hunting bedding areas is the range radius tool. So again, if you click on a waypoint, this card is going to show you uh, the ability to add a waypoint radius. And so the way I like to use this is you don't wanna get in too tight to bedding areas and blow your hunt before it even begins, but a lot of times you wanna be tight enough that you are going to get that deer movement in daylight before it's dark. So you need to be within a pretty close proximity to get them in the staging area. Um, they might not necessarily make it out to the edge of the destination food source before dark. So a lot of times you wanna push the envelope and uh, get a little bit more aggressive when you're hunting these bedding areas. So the rule of thumb I go by is, you know, anywhere from about 80 to 150 yards um, from that bedding location, just depending on uh, the wind speed, you know, how much other noise there is, uh, and how quietly you can get in. If your tree stands already in the tree, you can get a little bit closer. If you have to hang it, you're going to probably have to stay just a little bit further outside of that bedding zone. So we'll call it hundred yards here. And what that does is it applies a very clear circle around your waypoint, showing you how far, um, 100 yards is from any direction from the center of that waypoint. So just a super helpful, uh, quick feature to use and flip on to know uh, distances from any waypoint location. And then the last thing I wanna show you that I have organized on this piece of ground is our new foldering system. So as you can see here, I have a 2020 Missouri Whitetail folder and all of my waypoint icons are 
in this folder um, that are in this Missouri whitetail hunt zone. And so quickly, if you just tap hide on map, it hides all of the waypoints that are in that folder. And just with the click of a button, they reappear. So it helps you keep your map less cluttered, helps you organize. Um, you know, you can do it by year, you can do it by species, a lot of different ways that you can keep your content uh, concisely organized and easy to access. And I'll quickly show you how to add content to these as well. As you can see, I just turned off all of the waypoints in that current folder. If I just quickly tap add content, it will show me the icons inside of my view that are not yet in that folder. And you can quickly just select them and add that content to your folder. And boom, you have your full folder of your Missouri whitetail hunt, just like that. So to recap, there's a few layers that I'd always have on when e-scouting for whitetails, our crop data layers, our tree species and habitat maps, public and private. And then as far as features to use, make sure you're dropping waypoints, not only on tree stands to share with buddies, but also on bedding areas, rubs and scrapes to get a bigger picture and understand how deer are using a property. And then make sure that you're using the waypoint functionality of optimal wind to quickly at a glance know the best stands to hunt for that day's weather conditions, as well as the range radius to help you understand how tight you can push the envelope to get into that bedding area, to hunt the edge of that food source, whatever it may be. So use these tips and be more successful on your next whitetail hunt.